how to properly manual partition the drive for the Linux Mint dual boot system alongside with Windows. Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. In this video, I would like to show you how to properly manual partition your drive for the Linux Mint dual boot system alongside with Windows. This will allow you to install Linux Mint alongside with Windows so that it boots no problem. And also if you decide to upgrade Linux Mint or you decide to use another Linux distro, you can do that very easily because you're going to create a specific partition for root where we're going to install Linux Mint and home partition will be for the personal files so they won't be intact if you decide to reinstall your operating system. This isn't going to be a complete detailed guide how to install Linux Mint alongside with Windows but rather we're going to be focusing on how to partition the drive so that it works in the dual boot setup. If you want to know more about how to install Linux Mint alongside with Windows, I have a full detailed guide that you can check out by the link in the description. There I show how to properly download the image, how to verify it, flash the ISO, create a live boot, run the live boot and install it on the computer. So if you want to know more in detail, please follow through the guide. But if you already know how to do that and you just need to know how to properly partition the drive, this video is for you. It is a safe process if you do it correctly but I recommend copying any important files from the disk before doing it because if you do something wrong you might delete your files and lose them forever so make sure to copy them before you do that anyway let's get started but before start if you're first time to the channel please take a second to click the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you don't miss new videos also if you like this video and find it helpful please support with your like I appreciate it very much if you will have any comments questions suggestions drop them down in the comment section below I'll try to help you if I can and without further ado, let's get started. First, we'll use the disk management on Windows to create a partition for Linux Mint. And after that, we're going to be using Linux Mint partitioning tool to create different partitions for Linux. So press Windows key plus X and choose disk management. So I have two drives available. First one is the drive C where Windows is located. It says the boot partition, so we're not gonna touch that one. It is only 145 gigabyte, but I have another drive, which is drive D, and that one has 330 gigabyte. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna shrink this partition and allocate some space for the Linux operating system. For that, just right click, choose shrink volume, then enter the amount of space to shrink in megabytes, I'm going to allocate a hundred gigabyte for the Linux partition. So that's going to be a hundred thousand megabyte roughly and just click shrink. There you go. As you can see, it has shrinked the drive D by hundred gigabyte and has allocated 97 gigabyte as an allocated space. This is the space we're going to use to create partitions for Linux when we're going to be installing Linux Mint. So first of all, when installing Linux Mint, just follow through the prompts of the installer, choose your language, choose the keyboard layout, connect to the Wi-Fi, install multimedia codecs. And then once you get to the installation type step, we're going to select something else. And this will determine how you will install Linux Mint on your computer. Something else you can create or resize partitions yourself or choose multiple partitions for Linux Mint. So this is the option that will allow us to create new partitions. And that's an option that we're going to be using today. Press continue. So you need to find the free space that we have allocated in Windows. As you can see, it is 100 gigabyte that we have allocated before. The first partition we need to create is root partition. So just choose the free space and press plus. After that, we need to allocate at least 20 gigabyte for the root partition, but 25, 30 gigabyte is recommended. So let's just allocate 30 gigabyte because it's recommended for software and updates. So that is going to be 30,000 megabyte. The type is going to be primary. Location is going to be beginning of the space. For the partitioning, is we're going to leave ext4 journal and file system. For the mount point, just put a forward slash and press OK. All right, so there we go. As you can see, we have created the 30 gigabyte partition. Now go ahead and click on this free space again and press plus. Now we're going to need to create a swap partition. 
it is used for when you run out of RAM, so it's using this partition as extra RAM. It is recommended to have one, especially if your computers have like 8 gigabytes of RAM. If you have more than 8 gigabytes of RAM, you can use half of the RAM size. For example, I have 12 gigabyte of RAM on my computer, so I don't really need large swap partition. I'm only gonna allocate six gigabyte. So if you have systems with eight gigabyte of RAM or less, the swap partition should be equal to your RAM size. If you have a computer with more than eight gigabyte, just use half of your RAM size for the system. But of course, if you have 32 or 64 gigabyte, you don't need the swap partition at all. I'm just gonna allocate six gigabyte, that should be plenty. So 6,000 megabyte. This one's gonna be logical. So you can choose beginning of the space for the SSD drive, it is not relevant. But if you're running on the HDD hard drive, which is pretty much obsolete nowadays for any operating systems, then you should choose for the root partition beginning of the space. And if you're using for like a storage partition, you can choose end of the space. But for the SSD drive, it is irrelevant. Then for the file system, we need to choose swap area and press OK. All right, so we got two partitions created. Now we need to create the last partition, which is gonna be our home partition. And that is where we're gonna save all our files. So we're gonna use the rest of the free space and it's gonna be logical. Beginning of the space, it's gonna be ext4. And then for the mounting point, we're gonna put forward slash home and press okay. There we go. So now we got all three partitions ready. The reason why we separated home and root partition because in the future, this will make it easier to reinstall or switch Linux distros without losing your data. So the, basically the home partition will store all your personal files and settings. And then when you reinstall Linux Mint through a newer version, or you try different Linux distro, you can use this home folder and it will work on other Linux distros. But if you merge it together, then when you reinstall in Linux, it will also delete all your personal files. Then for the bootloader installation, we need to choose the main drive, which is going to be this 4 slash DAV 4 slash NVMe 0N1. As you can see, it is a 512 gigabyte Western Digital NVMe drive. So it refers to the entire disk, not just a specific partition. Installing GRUB here will place the bootloader in the master boot record or the EFI partition, depending on whether your system uses legacy BIOS or UEFI. It will ensure the GRUB becomes the primary bootloader for the entire disk, allowing you to dual boot between Windows and Linux. The GRUB will detect the Windows Boot Manager and add it to the boot menu. If you, for example, choose this Windows Boot Manager, this is a specific Windows partition that already holds the Windows Boot Manager and there will be a risk of overriding Windows Boot files which can break Windows installation, which in its turn might lead to booting problems that require manual repair. So we're gonna choose this one, but if you're on Windows 11 and for some reason it will not boot, we're gonna need to disable Secure Boot because sometimes GRUB fails to boot properly when Secure Boot is enabled. You might need to disable it in your BIOS or use Linux Mint compatibility with Secure Boot. It usually works without issues. All right, so we're all good to go. As you can see, we got everything selected. Make sure to select the proper root partition. And after that, we can go ahead and click Install Now. It shows you all the changes that will be done to the disk. So make sure you've done everything right, and then press Continue. Then follow through the rest of the prompts, select your location, Select your username, computer name, choose a password, and press continue. And the installation process has started. It might take a few minutes depending how fast your computer is and how good the internet connection because it's going to be downloading a few files, updates, and some codecs and some drivers. So it might take a little bit of time if you have a slower internet connection. I'm just going to fast forward it until it's done. There we go, the installation is complete. Let's go ahead and restart the computer. All right, let's go ahead and press restart now. Now you need to remove the USB drive that you've used to install Linux Mint. It's this guy over here. And after that, press enter. 
And before it starts loading into the operating system, press a dedicated key to enter BIOS UEFI settings. I'm going to put a list of all the keys possible for different manufacturers. So just pause it and press the key that is designed for your computer. If you have a password set up for BIOS, just enter your password and press enter. Then go to the boot section. And where it says the boot priority order, make sure that the Ubuntu is set in the first place. For that, just use the arrow keys to highlight it and then press F6 on the keyboard to put it up. If you're using Windows 11, make sure that the secure boot is disabled. If it is enabled, sometimes it may not allow you to boot Linux Mint. So make sure it is disabled, then press F10 and press yes. As you can see, we got the GRUB menu here that we can choose which operating system we want to boot from, whether it is Linux Mint 22.1 Cinnamon or Windows Boot Manager. So right now we can choose from it. So let's go ahead and choose Linux Mint. And voila, Linux Mint has started. So we got Linux Mint installed on our laptop. And this is a second operating system. We still have Windows installed on the computer. Well, there you have it. Now you know how to properly manual partition the drive so that you can install Linux Mint alongside with Windows. This manual partitioning should allow you to install any Linux distro on your computer alongside with Windows. So I hope you find this video helpful. If you like it, please support it with a like. Also, if you're first time to the channel, please take a second to click the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you don't miss new videos. If you still have any comments, questions, suggestions, drop them down in the comment section below. Also, if you want to learn more about Linux, Linux Mint in particular, or other Linux distros, I have a great playlist you can check out where you're going to learn a lot of helpful tips and tricks about Linux. But this is it for today. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye now.